this is ballroom. No, not the classical dances like waltz and tango. This is an underground scene that's been a safe space of expression for gay and trans people of color for decades. It's kind of like a mix between a dance floor and a catwalk. And this scene has created a whole new form of music. Yeah, I, um, I'm usually like super afraid of cameras. Um. Mike Q is a touring DJ who has been producing ballroom tracks for more than a decade and is the founder of the record label Queen Beat. I, I kind of feel like I'm talking to Diddy. <laughs> oh, he, like, created the first record label in ballroom music. So we're here in New York to meet the dancers and musicians of the ballroom scene. And this week is special because it marks the 50th anniversary for the Stonewall Riots. Which was a 1969 uprising of gay and trans people that took the fight for LGBTQ rights to the mainstream. Since before Stonewall, the ballroom scene has provided a place where the most marginalized people in American society could feel a sense of community and explore performances of gender and sexuality. Black and Latino gay and trans people gather to walk or compete at balls. Contestants strut down makeshift runways wearing glamorous fashions. Voguing, with its angular, model-inspired dance moves, became a part of these runway walks in the 80s. Participants vie for titles like Most Real, Best Schoolgirl Look, Best Military Look, and sometimes they're a part of a house or a family like House of Ninja, House of Labasia, or House of Extravaganza. For many, a house provides a surrogate family when their real one has disowned them. Each house has a mother and father who provide mentorship for their children. To be part of a house, not to be part of extravaganza, was family and looking out for each other, looking out for our own and defending our own. I am honored to even be here today to call myself the father of such a, such a beautiful organization. Jose Extravaganza is the father of the House of Extravaganza. He's been a part of the ballroom scene since the 1980s. I was 16 years old when I first uh, heard about the ballroom scene and walked down here, as a matter of fact, and, and saw a whole, like, utopia of a world. But see, as far as the, when the voguing comes to play, I go back to where it's from. Voguing is a feeling, and it, it's an attitude, just self-expression as individuals. Vogue is just one part of walking, but it might be the most well-known. Named after the fashion magazine, voguing was introduced to the mainstream in 1990 when Madonna released her track, Vogue. It was the dance style that inspired the song, Not the Other Way Around. And when Madonna needed a Vogue expert, she turned to Jose Extravaganza, who choreographed and appeared in the music video for the song. It was a dance that was created on, on hope and, and dreams for the community, you know? It was a dance that, you know, no technique was necessary. You didn't have to study it out of school like other art forms of dance, you know? At first, voguing was all about locking the body into perfectly straight lines in awkward but visually stunning positions, kind of like the models in Vogue magazine. Back then, this was done to disco or house music. So as a classical musician and just a music appreciator in general, I can, after hearing some ballroom tracks, I can recognize the similarity, the kind of vibe, the culture behind it, but I can't quite put my finger on what exactly are the musical ingredients that go into creating a ballroom ball track. track. Could you break it down in, in your own words? What is essential? The music started out with just house music that was adapted into ballroom before we got our own music. The most famous folk track of the 1980s was Love is a Message by MFSB. But in the 1990s, the Ha Dance by Masters at Work emerged as a quintessential folk track, and it's had the ultimate staying power. That track itself is just important. Like I said, that's just music that was brought, regular house music that was brought into ballroom. Mike Q has said that 90% of the tracks he's produced have been ha remixes. It's still considered the voguing song. And this came out in what, 1991? The ha dance includes a few things that make it so iconic, vogue-worthy, and representative of the genre. Minimal lyrics that allow the commentator to preside over a boss proceedings, calling out categories and pumping up the crowd. <laughs> a cymbal crash on every fourth beat that tells dancers when to dip to the floor. And of course, the samples. 
they were able to catch that fourth beat, that sound, uh, which we call a hot crash. Okay. So um, even today. Can you today, explain that further? So you hear it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That sample you hear throughout the ha dance, that iconic ha, comes from Trading Places, a 1983 movie starring Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. The film doesn't hold up under modern scrutiny. Aykroyd's in blackface in the scene. But the song immortalized and transformed that moment into something for gay and trans people of color. So a lot of people think, oh, you know, sample the ha, but and it's just a ha crash in there in this ballroom, but that's not it. It's still that feeling that it has to embody. And I think you can only get that from visiting a ball and being, you know, immersed in the culture and seeing how it is and feeling it. Mike Q invited us to his monthly party, House of Vogue, so that we could experience the ballroom scene ourselves. We wanted to learn how ballroom music has evolved from the early disco tracks, and when we got there, they were pretty excited to have PBS in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, PBS is in the motherfucking building. I'm being interviewed by the legendary iconic PBS. <laughs> <laughs> pinpoint uh, uh, the hallmark sounds in ballroom music, what would that be? The hallmark sounds in ballroom music, I would have to say number one is the crash. It's not like a regular drum crash. They like warp them and amplify them. So it's like, you're like, whoa. Like, it's it's like, extra. It sounds like the Matrix. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on. You hear the sample? <laughs> this is good. And wait till the crash come in. Think we saw we don't. Yeah. 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 Well, let's let's go. Oh, <laughs> that's that Jersey club I'm talking about. Today's ballroom tracks are a mixture of disco, funk, hip hop, house, RB, and electronic music. DJ Von Allure, he came up and started making remixes, like actual remixes. So he would take from all those older house tracks and whatnot and put into his remixes. So that's kind of where the formula started at. The repetitive bass beats and the cymbal crashes tell dancers when to strike a pose or hit the floor. There's uh, something special about the collaboration with you and Mike Q. Can you talk about that? He's a genius. Like, honestly, since I've been in ballroom, like, there's not too many DJs that can connect with a performer. Like, you can put anything hot out there and you can vote to it. But if the beat don't connect to what you're giving, you're not going to get that full story. I was going to ask you if you could, like, show us where you get your sounds from, your favorite 808s, the sub, the this, that, and the other. I only ask this so I can steal your techniques, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, what I do first is, because I have a, a long process the way that like mm -hmm. I do stuff, so I will create loops at first in uh, Fruity Loops here. Okay. But yeah, I... Uh, Oh, so you, you, okay, you plug in. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I like get it. my samples and I plug them in just the way. So though they're in f Whoa. increments. It's like it's 16, 16 from notes. One E N, two E N, three E N across the top. You know what I'm saying? In groups of four. Uh -huh. One E N, two E N, three E N. So each of these instruments is triggered at a different sixteen. Oh. You see shoot. what I'm saying? <laughs> I've never seen something like this before. After that, then I'll just start adding, you know, I'll just add little elements, whatever I hear, like in my head, I'll, um, I picture people voguing a lot. Or, yeah, yeah. Or just like, just the, the art of voguing or being at a ball. That's what I'm thinking about when I'm making tracks. One word that we kind of agreed on in the car was Ballroom music has an unmatched <laughs> attitude. <laughs> well, like, if we had to pick a word, I would just say attitude. Okay, 100%. I like that. Attitude, attitude very catchy. Yes. Very, very catchy, fun yeah. and relaxed, but intense. 
Ballroom tracks are meant to inspire competition. They're meant to make you feel fierce when you hear them, like you're about to do a battle on the dance floor. That's because voguing started as a way to work out differences between rivals. In Paris is Burning, Willie Ninja, known as the godfather of voguing, says that when two or more people were voguing on the dance floor, whoever had the best moves was throwing the best shade. Sometimes people throw shade just by voguing. Like, say you're an LSS, All right. if I call out LA. Let's get in. Now, LA come out to show who he is, and then you just pop up like, no! That's, that's shady. shady. That's well. shady. And when you throw shade, is that always a negative thing, or is that well, kind of a sign of? Yo, you know what I learned in the ballroom scene? Like I had to grow tough skin, cause I'm from the hood, so people throwing shade to me kind of feel like, yo, you coming at me? Disrespect. Yeah. It's like, you, yo, why you coming at me? Like, yeah, yeah. but I realize it's really like sportsmanship. Okay. It's like playing basketball and somebody smacking you in the butt. Yeah. Like, uh, it comes with the territory. Okay. The tracks are also meant to encourage and celebrate trans femininity. Some of the most classic ballroom tracks include samples that have phrases and words in them that might be offensive to the average listener, but at a ball, it's high praise. The music is a reminder of the enduring link between the dance form and the performance of femininity. I want you to explain the word. You, you look masculine as hell. Okay. But if you go to if you go to Vogue and you so soft and elegant with it, it's like, ooh, she's feeling she's, you know, it's like she is. It's it's because you feeling your femininity. So usually when I say it's usually just pertaining to the Vogue or oh I'm feeling like and using it as, you know, kinda like a feeling. Oh she's that that mean you're that mean You're Michael Jordan. No, yo, it don't even mean it mean yeah, you can say Michael Jordan, <laughs> Boy, but now nah, we gotta say not. Nah, we gonna say like you're RuPaul and Dennis Rodman, like. <laughs> Ballroom may still be an underground, underappreciated subculture, but we see its influence everywhere, from fashion to movies to TV, even the way we talk. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. The shade. The shade of it all. What about some things that you can think of that? Um, people commonly misunderstand or, yeah, just misunderstand about ballroom. Or... Okay, so the f number one thing, as soon as you said that popped in my head, is like everyone, they like to call the dip, what we call that. The death drop. The death drop. Uh, that's the death drop or the shablam, which I don't know where they got that from, but yeah, we, that's like one big thing that we have a problem with. So it's no shablam. Okay, so. It's called the dip. It's called the dip. Not the death drop. Okay, you heard it from Mike Q here first. <laughs> Let's get it. It's not called the death drop, it's called the dip. While the scene becomes part of pop culture, these artists are making sure ballroom stays true to its origins, a celebration of gay and trans people of color by creating music that is distinctively their own that I just don't want to be exploited in such a way where everyone's like so into it all at one time and then next year no one cares about it anymore. a trend or a fad or something. Yeah. yeah, but it's not that because it's like so many people put their like lives into this and you know, it's like every day for some people including myself. <laughs>